what's up your nose? I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe a rubber hose. Up your nose with a rubber hose. Vinny Barbarino. For those of you who don't know who Vinny Barbarino was or why you would have a rubber hose up your nose, uh, we're going to talk about that today. Yeah, we're going to have a professional doctor come in and talk about what's up your nose. Zebra attack in Ohio. You read that right. You saw it. It's It happened. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about it. Oh, man, we talk about bears and bobcats and mountain lions and and uh, all kinds of mean and nasty, crazy things. What, what, what is it? Is it this one right here? <laughs> it's a bobcat attack, my wife! A bobcat! A bobcat! Yes, see? Yeah, I, I need one that says, a zebra bit off my arm! A zebra! A what? A zebra! <laughs> Woo! All right, Derek Code finished firearm segment of the of the week. A Brownells bullet point. Going to talk about uh, two 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 two, and also shh, quiet. Uh, and uh, we're also and then well then we're going to talk about what's up your nose. All of that and more fun and frivolity on today's public uh, broadcast uh, number one one eight zero. Student of the Gun Radio. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics. Because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drift ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping ogre, Zach Martin. Now, give it up to your beloved host, the Pin Pan of America, Professor Paul Markle. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. All right, what do we got to talk about? Well, uh, if you are hanging out in the Discord channel, uh, good job, good job. If you got a question for us, go ahead and uh, drop that in there, and the boys will monitor it. And we, if we feel as though the rest of the world will benefit from your question, well, then we'll talk about it. And if we don't think that is the case, then well, there you go. Oh, <laughs> do we have a review of the week, Jared? Oh, uh, we will. We will in, very, in a very soon uh, moment. You want to do the Duracoat Finish Firearm first? Ye. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into the Duracoat Finish Firearm segment of the week. All right, bing, bang, boom. Was it last week that I had to we... go find the review? Oh, okay. Did you? Did, was it on the shelf next to you? Behind yeah, it was you? on the shelf over it there. Was on the shelf behind you. So uh, last week, I believe, if I am uh, correct, we talked about Dura Metal. Did we? Was that last week or two weeks ago? I can't remember. Uh, but recently on Student of the Gun Radio, we talked about the Dura Coat firearm finish called Dura Metal right the heavy metal finishes and it's how so it metal yeah it has actual uh pulverized metal in it so when you use it and it and it dries and it, it sets up it looks metallic right so we're going to transition from that directly into precious metals and guns pretty cool transition huh so this last weekend I engaged in an activity that I have not engaged in in a long, long time. And that is I went to a gun show locally. There was a lo local gun show. And I said, you know, I've never been to a gun show here in this town. It's a small community. It'll, it, it'll be cool, right? You know? So I, I paid my $5, which isn't bad because, you know, 10 years ago in Biloxi, they were, remember that it was at the Shriner Center. They were charging seven yep. bucks to get in. Well, that and, was ten. No, seven. And the uh, and the FUD guy at the front door is like, no concealed carry. Are you carrying a gun? No concealed carry allowed in this building. And he was like thumping on the desk, like, put it right here. You put it right here. You, you, you surrender your gun to me. Okay, you fat, stupid disgusting FUD a-hole. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and skin my gun out and give it to you. How about no? 
about no. So uh, as a as a quick aside, though, the uh, the gun show here had a big sign that says we endorse and approve of concealed carry. Uh, if, difference in the areas. Yeah, and it's a, it says uh, if you uh, all open or all openly carried guns or whatever must be checked at the desk. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. Because uh, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. It's a gun show, and people come in to, to you know buy, sell, trade guns. So if you bring in Grandpappy's Winchester Wingmaster or whatever, or Winchester X9000, and you want to sell it, well, you go up to the desk, and the dude opens it up and inspects it and sticks a freaking zip tie through the action, and that way uh, he knows that, you know, Johnny Fudd's not going to have an ND in the ceiling or into somebody. And that's fine. But uh, that's not what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about actually is what maybe, apparently, I guess it is, people have told me, oh, duh, people have been doing that for years. I'm like, okay, well, I've never seen it at a gun show, so calm down. There's a guy who had a table in there, and he said, and his t- sign said, I am a private seller, meaning he's not a gun shop or a pawn shop or whatever. He's not an FFL dealer. He's actually just an American that wants to buy and sell property. Because, you know, if in case you forgot, according to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, your guns are your property. They're not the property of the state. They're not a privilege granted to you by the state. And you don't need the state's permission to dispose of your own property. Well, his sign said, I am a private private business or private person or private citizen, and I buy, sell, trade guns for silver. You mean like the color? No, like the precious metal. So Homeboy was not interested in Bitcoin. Homeboy was not interested in your credit card uh, or your fiat currency. Homeboy was interested in silver. And I thought, hmm, that is interesting. Now, well, I didn't, if, he, if he exchanged goods for silver on that day, to what is this, three days later? Yeah. He, he would be a dollar and fifty or yeah, I think it's about a dollar and a half is what it increased spot price per dollar fifty per richer ounce. per ounce per ounce per ounce of silver. Yeah. Per so ounce. good on him. Yeah. If you guys haven't been paying attention to the, uh, the banking stuff that's going on oh. over the, the past week or so, we'll probably be talking about that at some point in the near future. Oh, in the, in the grad program, in the, in the bonus hours this week, we're going to talk about uh, the banking crisis and how it's not a joke. Yeah. Kids. It's not a joke. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. Uh, I did not buy a gun first. I didn't buy or sell or trade for silver. Actually, what I did was I purchased knowledge. Uh, that's one thing that I always uh, enjoy, or I usually I look for when I go to a gun show. Is Did you the, dock with is the another human? The one no, the one guy. Uh, there's usually one or two guys that have a uh, a table filled with firearms books. Whether it's a whether it's maintenance manuals or whether it's you know the complete history of the Glock pistol or whatever, like AR fifteen. Yeah, M sixteen super systems. Yeah, stuff like that. Or so I, you know, I actually, uh, I got, I bought uh, some books, some uh, military manuals, uh, and uh, is. Do I need to tell you guys that if it's important information, it needs to be a physical thing that you can hold in your hand, not on the internet, because anything that's on the internet, I hate to break your heart. But anything that's on the internet could be gone tomorrow. Or it could be altered and changed tomorrow. So if you want real, genuine, solid information, if you, you know, I I posted it a while ago. uh, I I went through, when we were moving, I went through a drawer and I found all the 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 owner's manuals for like the M1 carbine and the and the M M4 M16 and the, you know I found all these owner's manuals and I I took a picture of them and I said you know you need to have these and of course there's always one or two jackholes to borrow a phrase from Marty 
Like, why would I want that? I have it on my phone, or I can just I can just watch a YouTube video. You're right. You're Keep right. That. That's a great plan, and I want you to stick to that plan. Yep. Stick to that plan, buddy. I don't even need that. I just watch a YouTube video. <laughs> okay, whatever. So, yeah, that was my experience at the, uh, at the my heavy metal, precious metal. Not the silver's not really a heavy metal. My precious metal. My precious my precious metal experience at the gun show this weekend. So uh, trading guns for silver and silver for guns. So homeboy was willing to buy your gun and give you silver for it. And he was also willing to, to take your silver and give you a gun. So there you go. Uh, that would actually be kind of a cool horse trade. I'd like to, I'd like to do that. You know, like, like, he, you know, like how much do you want? You know, he's like, mm, I don't know what do you got. Let's see. So, all right. Let us go on, and of course, you can go to Duracoat fin- Firearm Finishes dot com and get yourself some Dura Metal. Yes, indeed, get yourself some Dura Metal. All right, is, is this home security pack something that we are planning on discussing today? Uh, let's go it, ahead and do the review of the week first. Ah, let's do okay. the review of the week. Hit it, Jared. Yeah, the title is S O T G Review, and this is from Rob Smith seventy seven on iTunes. He says. As Zach cuts and pastes the thing three times uh, so I can't see it anymore. He says, if you want to know the history, truth, and present status of our glorious country, then this is the go-to podcast for you. Professor Paul and the crew will tell you the truth, even if you don't want to hear it. One of the best podcasts on the air today. Well, thank you, Rob Smith, 77 from iTunes. We appreciate your feedback. If you guys have left a review in the past, go update it for to make it a present review because we've had we've done a lot of shows over the last year and uh but if you haven't left one yet and you're a listener that's listening right now if you weren't then you wouldn't care right yeah but go to studentofthegun.com slash itunes or whatever the podcast platform that you use is whether it's iHeartRadio or tune in or stitcher or whatever studentofthegun.com slash whatever that name is will get you where you need to go Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. Be that guy. Be that guy. All right. Moving on. It is time to, uh, well, to, to thank our friends and allies out there. Uh, and one of our allies is in Ohio. I don't know if they're uh, uh, looking out for the zebras over there, but uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I saw Charlie, ju- Charlie jumped into that thread. I, I posted the zebra story on our fascist book, and Charlie jumped in. He's like, yeah, oh, that's funny. Yes, there's zombie zebras all over the place. All over the place. Yes, indeed. So, uh, I, <laughs> oh, there you go. I don't know what that means, but uh, Zach has uh, something he wants to bring up. Okay, I guess I'll take this over. So over on High, uh, our wonderful, amazing sponsors, High Point Firearms, uh, if you go over to their site under their uh, firearms tab, you got the fire, the home security pack, which is a – they've got a couple different models, which comes with a gun a, and a safe and I think something else. So uh, it, It's, it's a, got a cable. The, the safe has like a cable thingy, I think. Yeah. Doesn't it have a cable thingy that you can like secure it to a – a bed post or under your bed or something like that. You know where you can go. Now, Zach, did you, do you recall this? Uh, our friend Dave, uh, he knew that someday in the future we would be talking about hmm. this. So he, uh, very kindly consented to, uh, an interview and we interviewed him and he talked about the home security pack in a, uh, a yeah. video that we did. A vid, uh, a, vid a vid, yes. So if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to avail yourself to that, uh, Zach, if you want to, uh, you can put it in the uh, in the show notes. Yeah, it has a, it has the gun, it has the the trigger lock dealio, it has the case, and it has the cable that comes with it. So that is their uh, home security pack. Uh, if you know somebody who's like they're on the fence and they're and they're like, well, I want to get a gun. But I'm not sure. All right, let, let's face facts. A lot of your friends, neighbors, acquaintances, 
Uh, you tell them they're like, hey, you got a gun, right? Versus acquaintances. Uh, you tell them they're like, hey, you got a gun, right? You need to have a gun. And they're like, no, no, no. I'm, but I'm afraid that in the middle of the night, the gun will wake up and kill my whole family. How can I prevent the gun from getting up in the middle of the night and killing my family? You say, well, yeah, maybe if, if you're afraid that the gun is going to become zombified and wake up and, and decide it's going to kill your whole family in the middle of the night, what you could do is you could put it in this nice home security kit. How's that sound? Will that make you feel warm and fuzzy and safe? And they say, yes, I feel better about my life. Like, okay, there you go. We, we, we just helped a brother out. All right, Juxi, J-U-X-X-I, is the way to go. Uh, because believe it or not, Juxi is not beholden to Google. They are not beholden to YouTube. Uh, YouTube and, and Google uh, and even that uh, that scumbag piece of human filth, uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates and Zuckerberg cannot shut down Juxi. Okay? So whether they like it or not, it's still going to exist. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. What's the latest? The latest on Jukesy.com and the Student of the Gun channel is our interview with uh, Rick J. Lindsay. If you did not check out the interview with Rick Lindsay from X Insurance, you need to do that. You need. Here's to the deal. Here's what you need to know. Rick sued the city of Chicago, and they paid him two hundred thousand dollars and so. one. Yep, that's all you need to know. Yep. Go listen to the interview. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Oh, and yes, we did talk about Dura Metal last week because we talked about whether or not you were a metalhead. So I like it when I remember. Oh. I like it when I remember stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a long time ago. Does it seem like a lot has transpired in one week? I don't know, but to me it does uh, because a lot has transpired in the last week. But that's that, Mr. That's That. It's time for you, if you're a new listener or an old listener, or if you're just listening, listening, uh, close that hole underneath your nose, open up both of your ears, and listen louder. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Ba, ba, ba. You know, Jared and Zachary, uh, the my advice uh, in regards to uh, having a paper, a physical copy uh, of a book or whatever, it, it's it's similar. It's not the same, but it's similar to the advice about Juxi. People are like, "Oh, I don't need Juxi. I got a YouTube channel." I'm like, okay. So when you wake up that one day. And you have a little nasty gram in your inbox from from Google telling you that you violated their arbitrary community standards and all your videos are gone. Who are you going to cry to? You're going to cry to YouTube? You're going to cry to Google? You're going to appeal it? And, and, and sometimes the robot says, okay. And then sometimes the robot says, don't care. Sorry don't care there's uh and unfortunately most people don't look or not forward thinking like that they don't really care until it happens to them whether it be with a book or a video or whatever yeah um, but those of you if you're one of those people and you're listening that's fine you live your life the way that you want to however there's also there have been numerous studies done on the the speed of reading and the speed that you can consume material and a digital book is generally is read about 25 percent slower than a physical book and so the way that i view things is why would you not use a physical book or what i do is i download an audio book and i listen to it and then if it's worth buying in a physical copy then i'll buy the physical copy now there are some books you just know it's like i'm just going to buy the physical copy right now maybe get the audio version too sometimes what i do is i'll play the audio version while i 
actually read the book because it's different types of uh, media consumption. There's different, and I'm kind of like the the medium between several different types of learning. And it depends on what I'm doing at that point in time that that works best for me. So um, that's what I do. But if you could read the same exact material 25% faster, that means that you can consume more knowledge and education. You can gain more knowledge through being educated, through the consumption of more books, just by having the physical copy. That's the only change you need to make. Why would you not do that? Yeah. So there's my argument. Yeah. So uh, do that. Do that. All right. Brownells Bullet Points is brought to you by, well, strangely enough, brownells.com. All right. Bing, bang, boom. Boom. Yes, indeed. So uh, several things, several things to talk about today or at least a couple things. Uh, back on 0222, on February 22nd, we talked to you guys about Second Amendment Appreciation Day or Second Amendment Celebration Day. And uh, Brownells put their money where their mouth is. And what did they do, Jared? Going to open this right meow. <laughs> right meow. They donated. A, it's, a, it's an interesting number because... It was on 222 2A day, and Brownells donated two, $22,222 to three different gun rights organizations. And that was as part of their annual 2A day celebration, which is on 222 every single year. This this year, they started on 22222, but then unfortunately, the years don't remain the same. And <laughs> so you just can't have the same number every year. Guess what it's going <laughs> to be next year? It's going to be uh, 22224. 24. Yeah. Look at that. We doubled it. <laughs> so the three companies that they were able to make that donation to were Second Amendment Foundation, the Gun Owners of America, and the Iowa Firearms Coalition. Because they're in Brownells Iowa. Brownells is located in Iowa. Yeah. So it makes sense for them to be yeah. uh, the Iowa Firearms Coalition to be near and dear to Brownells' heart. Yeah. So uh, there's that. They put their money where their mouth is. If you're wondering about where you should put your money, uh, whether you should support a, an organization that supports you, uh, that's not just worried about making money, but actually is worried about your gun rights, about your, your, your rights as an American, well, you might want to su- think about supporting Brownells. And, of course, uh, about two weeks ago, we – had uh, our, our buddies, uh, we had our buddy Roy on, was it two weeks ago? Was it two? I think it was, two or three. Uh, it's been recently. Uh, we had our buddy Roy uh, from Brownells. He, he is the uh, <laughs> possum fat back, as where he go, what he goes by on, <laughs> on socialist media. But uh, uh, we talked about the, uh, the new website and, how, and all the upgrades and how it was like five plus years in the making. And, you know, when you have 875,000 SKUs, <laughs> that's just, it takes a little bit. It takes a little bit of effort to, to update a website that has 75,000 thousand skews a hundred eight hundred and seventy five thousand skews not quite a million but uh, uh this last week uh our buddy roy was out at the range and he was out at the range with the brn that stands for brown owls right 180 sh Shh. that's what he calls it he calls it the Shh. the brn 180 sh uh, is actually an upper receiver that you can purchase from them. Uh, it is designed, it's styled, uh, and designed like a like the original Armalite uh, AR-18 or AR-180. But the difference with this one is the uh, the 180 SH is 300 blackout, and it has three gas settings. Like, why would you want three? Well, there's one gas setting shuts it off. So when you press the trigger, the cartridge ignites, but no gas comes back to the action. Because you guys know that some of the noise that you hear from a semi-auto is gas escaping from 
the ejection port. You know that, right? You're aware of that? Okay. Uh, so yep. you can either set it for unsuppressed, just run it like normal, suppressed, like suppressed and allow semi-auto, or you can turn the gas off and get it to be super quiet. And uh, this that it's chambered in 300 blackout. And if you guys don't know by now, there's two kinds of 300 blackout ammunition. There's supersonic, means faster than the speed of sound, right? And there's subsonic, slower than the speed of sound. Whether you have a can on your gun or not, whether it's a bolt-action rifle with a suppressor on it, uh, the suppressor can't stop the supersonic crack when the bullet breaks the speed of sound. That just is something that happens. But if you have subsonic ammunition, then you have no crack. And all you have is the gas. And if you capture the gas in a really good suppressor, silencer, gun muffler, moderator, can, shall I go on, uh, snot locker. No, it's not, it's not a snot locker. <laughs> I was just trying to come up with names. <laughs> but if you, uh, if you capture that, then it's really quiet. So uh, uh, Roy went to the range and filmed a video, and he actually did a video where he turned the gas off and manually cycled the operation and yeah, that's pretty quiet. The loudest part was the bullet banging into a steel target downrange. That was the loudest mm. part. So if you're looking for quiet, shh, uh, check out the BRN 180SH. Yes, it's an upper receiver. And yes, that upper receiver will drop onto any standard AR-15 lower receiver regardless of manufacturer. If it's a standard mil-spec AR-15 lower, you just pull the pins out, drop that on there, Bob's your uncle, and you're off and running. So there you go. All right. Oh, real quick, I just noticed, I just saw a notification that Black Hills Ammunition, the 9 millimeter, uh, 9 millimeter jacketed hollow point Black Hills is in stock at brownhills.com. So check that out. All right, moving on, moving on. It's time for, uh, well, time for Zach, for me to be quiet and Zach to uh, talk a little bit. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the Pimp Hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. And over at ShopSOTG.com, we are very proud and pleased to announce that we have the latest book in the, in, from our good buddy Nicholas Orr, The Newest Pipe Hitter's Guide. A Piper's Guide to Access Denial, You Shall Not Pass, is available right now on ShopSOTG.com. Dad, do you want to say anything about it? No, it's, it's a pimp hand approved version, and uh, you definitely want to add that to your collection. If you've got the previous two, uh, you definitely want to buy that one. And even if you don't have the previous two, that's cool. Uh, you can get that too. Our buddy Nicholas Orr. Uh, he asked myself and uh, our mutual friend Jeff Kirkham if we would be willing to contribute to that book. And, of course, we said yes. We're not going to no say F no. You. Huh? You said no, F you. No, F you. Yeah, forget you, man. Yeah. No. So, uh, yes, you, you want to. You definitely want to grab that up and uh, you know, get the paperback version. Hold it in your hand take notes in the margins, highlight stuff, do it's, it's Intel. It's serious Intel. Yes, so, indeed. And pick, of course, as opposed to Outtel. Outtel, yeah, that's right. All right. And so of course, wait, now, one more thing, one more thing at the time of this release, if you go to shop SOTG.com and at the checkout, you use the code P H G stands for pipe hitters guide. You can get all three books for a discount. What? So you get that's awesome. You're so book, righteous. 
uh, Crushing the Coming Societal Breakdown, the second book, which is Citizens of Regular Defense Corps, and the newest third book, uh, Access Denial, for uh, one great price, one nice little discount. Give you so a that discount. Is, get all three of those books. And use the code PHG at checkout, and you'll get a discount. There you go. Holy cow, we have a lot of books listed on this store. We do. We do. All right, it is time for a student of the gun homeroom. 30 books. From wow. Our, well, from our good friends, Crossbreed Holsters. Dangerous from Madison Rising. Yes, indeed. Because that's what it's all about here. Crossbreed Holsters brings us this segment every single week to remind you that you need to be dangerous on demand. Whether you're a dude, whether you're a chick, uh, and that's it. There's only dudes and chicks. There's nothing in between. Uh, You need to be dangerous on demand, and they can help you do that. That's their job. That's what they do. They help you to be dangerous on demand by offering you high-quality concealed carry and not-so-concealed carry. They have some outside-of-the-waistband holsters, too, if that's your bag, man. Uh, So get on over there. And when you do, don't forget, show some love. Use the promo code SOTG and show some love. All right, well, we're, we're going to talk about a dude who should have been dangerous on demand, um, or his buddy should have been. I don't know, but uh, this <laughs> – so we talk about bears. I wonder what Mr. Pogue thinks about this. Mr. Pogue, the wildlife expert, who says you should never carry a gun in the woods because you're more likely to shoot yourself – than you ever are to need one to protect yourself from a wild animal. That's Mr. Pogue. Yes, that's Mr. Pogue. The uh, fornication cranium. The fornicate cranium. Is it, would, it be, would fornication cranium be the correct? I think, I think that would. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that's good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh so we're going to be dangerous. I'm going to be dangerous on demand. I'm dangerous on demand right now. I'm sitting in my chair in my studio, and I, I'm strapped, biatches, because you're not going to get a postcard that says, P.S., at 11.43 a.m., you will need a gun. That's not going to happen. You just got to do it. So and if it did, you'd be like, okay. You're like, all right, I'm going to take a rifle. Uh, Either A, I'm not going to yeah. go there, or B, I'm going to have a yeah. rifle in my hand. Uh, <laughs> we got a story from WDTN.com, Channel 2, Dayton. Like, well, well, what's going on in Dayton? What's going on in Ohio? Who wants to read this O-H. one? Oh, H. Oh, H. I'll do it. It's oh. the Zebra Bites man's arm off in Ohio before being put down. And this is from Circleville, Ohio, which is right outside Columbus. Which is, yeah, between Columbus uh, and Chillicothe. Taken, yeah. uh, I believe that Circleville is we've close to where they had the state fair, wasn't it? Yeah, we've we've been through Circleville. Yeah, many times. Many times. <clears throat> uh, a man was taken to the hospital Sunday afternoon after a zebra attacked him in Pickaway County. According, you know what it is. This zebra inhaled all those chemicals and he became a Dude, super I'm, zebra. Dude, I'm saying I, he, the zebra, like, zombified freaked out from all the from the poison in the air in ohio according to an incident report from pickaway county sheriff's office deputies were sent to the 6900 block of darby road in circleville at around 5 30 p.m to a fenced in field after hearing reports a man had his arm dismembered by a zebra that he owned wow as deputies arrived they saw the victim laying on the ground with his right arm covered with his sleeve The incident report said the victim had his arm bitten off by the zebra. Like, just gone. That's a story to tell. At least he's got a good story to talk about. Well, the the thing is that they'll probably be able to get it back on, hopefully. If somebody put it on ice and hauled it to the the, uh, emergency room, they'll probably be able to put it back on. 
But. While deputies were treating the man, the zebra continued acting aggressive and charged one deputy cruiser that was positioned to block the animal from the man. The man was accompanied by family members while he was being put in an ambulance as the zebra continued acting hostile. I can't wait till we get to the good part. Oh, yeah. Dep deputies began blowing air horns and yelling at the zebra to scare it away, but it continued to charge toward authorities and the victim's family members. They told the deputies not to turn their backs on the zebra since that was when it would attack and gave them permission to put down the zebra if necessary. I'm glad they got permission. Yeah, the man, you know what the crazy thing is? Not just the arm being like mangled and whatnot. This is an expensive loss for this family. A deputy then fatally shot the zebra in the head due to its continued aggressive behavior. Whew. One account from the a PCSO deputy in the incident report says that the zebra was aggressive due to being protective of about five or six female zebras that were in the field. After the zebra was killed, the man was taken to Grant Medical Center for his injuries. So the zebra was a simp. Uh, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> That's funny. So uh, here's the deal. Uh, so here's the deal. In, this, in the, the video, it doesn't say that a tourniquet was applied to the man. Not in the story. In the story, which, okay, hey, Channel 2. There, wait, that is on, a... There, Okay. There's a video here, Zach. If you want to, while well, Dad's talking right now, if you want to pull that up and see if you can yeah, get it. Yeah. So in the we'll video, you see the deputies pulling out a tourniquet and they put a tourniquet on the man's arm to stop the massive hemorrhage from killing him. So you'd think perhaps that that might be uh, an important part of the story. Like, oh, and P.S., deputies applied a tourniquet to the injured man to save his life. Nah, that's not yeah, important. But, that that part's he not important. would have lost his arm because the, the nerve damage from the tourniquet. Yeah, but now he's going to lose his arm because of the tourniquet. Like, wait, what? <laughs> what, what? What now? Yeah. So, uh, homeboys, uh, what, what, I, what I appreciate... Uh, in the uh, in the story here is that the Pickway County Sheriff deputies, uh, homeboys are, are are rocking the eight seventies. There's yeah. no they're not put, use patrol rifles. They're rocking the eight seventies here, man. And uh, it's how long is this video? Do we have enough time? It's for two it? minutes, but I don't think this is the right video. Is it? I I don't know because the video that I watched originally, you know what this might what might have happened, Jared. You know how news sites continuously update their stories? Because yesterday, yeah. when I watched this video, I saw the deputy pulling out a tourniquet in his hand because I recognized that it. it was one of those you-know-what tourniquets, uh, not, our, not, our, not the ones that we like, but to, and running over to the dude. And I saw in there that that the you know a, a tourniquet was applied to the victim's arm to stop the massive hemorrhage from killing him. Uh, so the the wonderful thing about this, do, do we still want to play the video? Is there um, enough? Is there valuable information in this video? I don't know. I don't know because this isn't the video that I watched. So potentially, Ow, it, what the heck? I, You're here. I'm here. We're all here. Play right. it. <laughs> so, if this has no valuable audio whatsoever, we apologize. Oh, yeah. This is Pickaway County. County deputies responded to reports of a zebra biting a man's arm off. This body cam footage of them looking at the zebra and them on the scene. I do not see the man with his arm bitten off. Someone's getting a phone call. They're walking around. Uh, the Z talking to, I think that's the buddy that they're talking to right now, trying to figure out what happened. Yeah. Is there a way for him, for you to keep him back? We're trying not to shoot him, but. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the muzzle control of these guys is great because there's a dude running out trying to chew the zebra away, and they, uh, the zebra was close, and the dude was pointing a shotgun at him. 
And then the the guy, I think it's the buddy of the victim here, ran over to try to shoo him away with a stick or whatever, and the the cop immediately Races, raises his yeah. shotgun. But you don't you don't always see that happen. No, no. Now, I, I will say there's something kind of scary about this, which is when you think, oh, animal bites off man's arm, you think like snarling and foaming at the mouth and like. Grr. No, this is just a normal zebra walking around. Yeah. Like if you were to be walking down the street and see that zebra, it's like, oh, little horsey, look at it. Not having any idea of that just mutilated a man. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, the dude's already in the ambulance in this video. They might, yeah, they might be. So, all right. That, I guess that's that. And, and of course, they, 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 they stopped it before the, the deputy fired his gun and, and shot the zebra and because affecting people's sensibilities. Here's yeah, yeah, so here's the deal. In case you're like, what is the deal, Paul? I don't know what it is. I'm I'm gonna tell you. Uh, I sent the, you know I sent uh, this to my good friend Bill because I knew that I didn't know if he saw it tonight, but I knew that Bill would appreciate this. Yeah, because Bill has he has uh, put down many a zebra <laughs> and has proof and evidence of such uh, in his trophy room. For those of you that are that are not students of animal biology or here's the deal. Zebras for like a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand years, people have tried to domesticate zebras. And it essentially always fails, right? Uh horses. Horses, beasts of burden, right? Your draft horses, horses that you that pull plows, horses that you ride on their back, horses that you put on chariots, and yada yada yada. Now we like to see movies and cartoons and stuff where they're like, "Oh, they had a a chariot pulled by a zebra. That was really cool." Here's the deal: man has been trying to make zebras domestic work animals for thousands of years. And guess how successful that's been? It is not. <laughs> it has not been successful because zebras are mean. <laughs> See, anybody talk to any like the funny thing is I liked I like to believe that there are English speaking and reading people in Africa right now, like Kenya, Zimbabwe, Zaire, South Africa, you know, Uganda, that are that are watching this and, and they're all like, duh. Zebra kill you, man. What do you are you crazy? <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> Zebras will kill you. They will stomp you into the ground. <laughs> and people are like, I don't know how a zebra could bite someone's arm off. Have you ever been close to a horse's mouth? Do you know how big a horse's mouth actually is? Because someone said in there, they're like, I don't think a zebra could bite someone's arm off. You don't think that? Based on your TikTok experience? Based on my experience watching one-minute TikTok videos, I don't think a zebra could do that. Like, have you ever been to it? Like, have you ever seen a horse? Like, been like up close to it? Do you know how powerful a horse's jaws are? How and how big their mouths actually? Not are? as powerful as an alligator. So there. No, yeah, but there's like, I don't think a zebra. I love people on on the social media. I don't think that a zebra could bite someone's arm off. And then have you ever been bitten by a child? You ever been bit? Right, people have been like, bitten by horses. A uh, horse by a human is, child. Yeah. Have you ever been bitten by a human child? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think a zebra or a horse could definitely bite an arm off. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, are you kidding? Yeah, uh, and and zebras are mean. They're freaking mean animals. I knew this 20, 30 years ago. How do people toot? They're cool looking. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they're, they look cool, but they're mean. Zebras are mean, man. And they always have been. And this is, this is the crazy thing. It's like, you know what wild animals are? Wild. They're wild. And they're animals. Uh, wild animals are wild. Uh, but the the biggest 
question that was not answered by Channel 2 WTDN Ohio was, did they have zebra steaks shortly thereafter? See, the, the, the folks in Kenya and Uganda and Zaire, they read that story and they're all like, hey, they're going to eat that, right? It's like, it's like Peter Griffin. Are you going to eat that? Mr. Griffin, that's a stapler. You want to split it? Mr. Griffin, that's a zebra. You want to split it? Mm. <laughs> if they didn't eat that, then they're, they're messing up, man. They're, they're wasting food, wasting protein. Let me tell you what people in Africa don't do. People in Africa don't waste protein. If, you, if they would have shot that thing in South Africa, the, the villagers would have been out there with their knives and zip, zap, zoop. That thing would have been steak. It would have been... Uh, were, you there, were you there with Bill when, when they were talking about... Uh, when he was talking about how they leave, when they're done, there's nothing left but a red spot on the ground. Oh, yeah, they use everything. Yeah. When when you, you bam, the zebra goes down, woof, here come the villagers. Shoop, 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 shoop. They leave, there's nothing left behind but a red spot on the ground. They don't waste protein. And people are like, oh, they're, they're shedding tears. I'm waiting for the people to go out and like do a memorial and put flowers out for the zebra dude it's an animal just eat it make a cool rug i hope they made a cool rug out of it i had to yeah, actually I, use it <laughs> yeah a good i sent a good friend of mine uh that story and he said he goes am i a bad person for my first thought being what load did they use to put that thing down with <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. he's like my first thought is well what load were they using mm -hmm. i want to know um but if you're wondering could a 12 gauge take down a zebra a, an adult male zebra the answer is yes the answer is yes so uh there you go there you go <laughs> oh come on man yeah we're animals are pure like little bambies and stuff no, animals actually are wild, and 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 most most animals in the wild would just as soon stomp you in the ground, <laughs> or have you for dinner, uh, or just you know, then they, they yeah, it's not this life is not a Disney movie. <laughs> just in case you're wondering, life is not a Disney movie, uh, and wild animals can and will maim you. So there you go. So cat in the hat, there's actually, see, this is a twofold story. So number one, we had a wild animal. And they're like, well, they bought it and it's in a, it's in a field. I'm like, okay, congratulations. It's still a wild animal and zebras are still mean. Uh, and they were able to tourniquet this dude's arm. So if, if you were there, if you were the only person there and you saw this happen, could you, and you're like, well, and. They're like, well, why would you want to shoot it? Well, what if I'm trying to put, the, if I'm trying to render first aid to homeboy here who's on the ground going, ah, my arm. And, you know, Zippy the zebra comes up and he wants to bite my arm off. Like, I don't think so, Jack. Zippy the zebra. And folks are like, why did they, why didn't they taser it? Let me explain something to you kids out there in the audience. Once a wild animal decides, you know what? I don't know what that thing over there with two legs is, but I'm going to take a bite out of it. Once they decide that it, once an animal decides that it's cool to bite, attack, kill a human, they don't go back. You know, you, you can't send a zebra to counseling and sit down with it. It's like, you know what? That was wrong. And I understand that biting that guy's arm off is wrong. And I'm not going to do it anymore. Promise. No, because that's... Here's the deal. If the deputies wouldn't have killed it, what would have happened is the uh, the ODNR or the, or the county game officials, the county game warden would have, either the game warden or the... Uh, I don't know, maybe the dog catcher. <laughs> um 
they would have ordered it, a judge or would have ordered the animal destroyed, okay? So if the deputies wouldn't have shot it right then, that, that here's the deal. When the, as soon as the zebra bit the dude's arm off, it pretty much signed its own death warrant because there was, there was no point in time where they were going to say, you know what, it's cool. It probably won't do it again. Yeah, that's not how that works. Mm-hmm. So... And they're like, well, they got permission from the family. Isn't that nice? Doesn't it make you feel warm and fuzzy? <laughs> so if the family would have said no, they're like, all right, well, just let the zebra keep attacking people. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> ah, moving on. So we're going to go from that to what's up your nose. Yeah. Jared, you want to you, you want to uh, do an intro for our special guest? Well, I can give you an intro the for what's him. what's what? Yeah. Uh, he'll be joining us very shortly. We're waiting on him in the, uh, the, lobby. the waiting room here. Yeah, we've got him in the lobby waiting, and it's Dr. Amana. He is a doctor at Bueller Athletic Clinic, and uh, he's actually from Honolulu, Hawaii, and he's here in the Salt Lake Valley, and he's the, the dude that did two of the three nasal cranial specific work treatments on me. That's what's called in nasal, nasal cranial specific work. And those are the things with the balloon that we talked about on, well, we talked about it on the grad program. So those of you that are grad program members and you heard about it on the fighting fitness segment, I wanted to bring Dr. Amada on to talk more in depth about the procedure and what it helps. Cause I did get some questions about it and uh, it's, it's fixed a lot of things for me. It, they weren't major issues, but things like, Sleep apnea, for instance, that could be a major issue for some people. Uh, it's basically not being able to sleep mine. is a BFD. Yeah, and m- mine wasn't like horrible, but I can definitely tell a difference now. I didn't know what I was missing out on. I, I didn't understand that the lack of oxygen could make you not feel like you slept well. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, but, so that's one of the things, one of the bigger things that it fixed for me. Uh, I had a deviated septum because I've been punched in the face so many times. It fixed that. I have a clear pathway to my nose or for it, through my nasal pathways now. So um, that's something I want to bring Dr. Amada on to talk about. And we're going to bring him on right now. The next voice that you will hear will be all of us together. Hey, guys, I've got Dr. Brandon Amada on. He's from Honolulu, Hawaii, and he's residing in Draper right now uh, he and he finishes school at life chiropractic college west december of 2020 shortly thereafter he started his postdoctorate fellowship with dr craig bueller i don't know if you've anybody that's listening right now has heard of craig bueller he's been around the name's been around in the in the fighting world for a little bit because he helps with athletic injuries and uh, so dr craig bueller and he started the his postdoctorate fellowship there with bueller at bueller athletic injuries and human performance clinic in march of 2021 so that shortly after the he finished the school went right into this uh, one of the things that i think is interesting is we've talked about on our podcast here on the show we've talked about human performance quite a bit we've got a, a friend of ours who's a doctor a swat doc down in california who does, uh, he owns his own, uh, a couple of different things, but one of the things that he does is stem cell replacement. And, and so we, we talked to him a lot about that kind of stuff and how it helps human performance. And in fact, I think, was it Dan's idea or yours, dad, that w- we were talking about the human performance center? I can't remember. It's been a long, could have been a collaboration. It's been a long it was a collaborative time. Idea it's been there. a long time. Yeah. So thank you, Brandon. We appreciate you coming on the show. No, I'm stoked to be here, and uh, I, I'm excited to talk about the work that we do here at the clinic and just try to educate the public on some really powerful tools that are out there. Yeah, and th- through experience, I've experienced this several times now. I've only gotten one adjustment there, but I've had several of the, I think the technical term is nasal cranial specific work, right? Yeah, we technically call it the nasal specific technique, NST. Okay. And uh, it's a powerful one, as you've experienced for yourself. Yeah. So give the audience a little bit of a background on what that is and why it exists. Yeah. Um, well, the, the nasal specific technique, it, it's been around for a while, but not many people know about it. The way that I learned about it was through 
my mentor and boss, Dr. Craig Bueller, who learned it from one of the developers. It, his name was Dr. Richard Stober, and he came out of Portland, Oregon. And so this technique, it involves a small balloon. I actually tied one up so you guys can kind of just see for yourselves. A small balloon attached to one of these pumps that usually comes with like a blood pressure cuff. And so what it does is it inflates and then quickly deflates. And the reason for this being is that we are really working with this structure right here, as you can see. And so the skull is composed of many different cranial bones and they all come together at these sites, kind of like puzzle pieces that we call sutures. These sutures, they connect kind of like this. And when you have normal function, they should be able to expand and then come back down and compress. And so what happens through natural respiration is that it has this natural pumping effect that helps nourish the brain with cerebral spinal fluid. It also, it, it really helps clear out the waste products that help bring in fresh nutrients. And ultimately too, it also opens up the nasal passages to allow more oxygen to come in and naturally breathe through your nose um, instead of having to breathe through your mouth. And so what happens is with trauma, like hits to the head in action sports and MMA or um, action sports athletes like professional surfers, snowboarders, skiers, football players, it's just a lot of this trauma can cause these cranial sutures to now begin to fixate and you lose that normal respiratory type of function. And so the objective really is to use this balloon right here to go in and have a nice expansion so that it resets the sutures and restores normal function. Yeah. You explained that way more eloquently than I could have there. <laughs> so that, that was much easier to understand than my attempt at explaining it on a couple of shows ago. Uh, but when I did it, I try attempted to explain it. I, it, it generated questions from the audience. They're like, well, what about this? What about this? I was like, I do that's mm. way above my understanding, but I'll see if Dr. Amato will come on because he's the one that's done the, the nose balloons for me. And uh, totally. it's interesting for me because I had two options. I, I, I didn't know about this option until our, our mutual friend, Jeff Kirkham told me about it. But so originally I was looking at the sinus surgery to fix my deviated septum. And I'd heard so many mixed reviews from my friends who had had it done. And some of them had gotten it done and it helped a lot. It was a tremendous improvement in their quality of life. But then some of them had got it done and it was the same. They're like, well, I got the surgery and then I had the recovery time and nothing's changed. I was like, man, I don't know which one I'll be. And I'm, I'm, it's not bad enough for me to, to go through the, you know, my nose wasn't closed up enough. Turns out it really was. And I was just too stubborn to realize it. But it wasn't, I thought that it wasn't closed up enough for me to go through the, the surgery and whatnot because I thought that was my only option. So when I was made aware of this, I was like, wow, there's really no downside. I mean, there's, they're not getting in there cutting on anything. So if it doesn't work, it's, it's a little bit of the money out of my pocket and that's it. And so I scheduled the appointment, came in, and it turns out that Dr. Amada here is like the best person I've ever met at being a duck. And that's the way he explained it. He's like, on the top, I'm calm and cool. And underneath, I'm kicking like, like this you know, if you get nervous or whatever. Because uh, he said that my nose was one of the most difficult that he'd ever had to do. And I was like, dude, you did a great job because I didn't even know that you were having difficulty there. Uh, so he was so graceful with the motion that it worked fantastic. He should have paid you for the experience. <laughs> that's right. Honestly, it was, it was quite the experience. I rarely ever have to have a patient pull their cheek to the side to help assist me open up their nasal passage. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was interesting, man, but I'll tell you what, after the first one. So the first time I had the treatment done, I heard a bunch of pops and everything that you hear, you know, they watch the videos on YouTube and people are like, yeah, I heard this crunch, 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 crunch. I heard that it was, there was a lot of them. So I, I presume what that was is it was the, the puzzle pieces is what you call them. They're kind of realigning and getting back into the correct position. Is that true? Yeah, exactly. Um, you have 
many different cranial bones that come together. And then at all these junction points that creates individual joints. And so there's about 67 skull joints that are just within your cranium. And so as you do this expansion, you're actually adjusting all these little joints and they're shifting into place and reestablishing uh, a natural normal orientation. And so it's actually a pretty wild experience to hear that with your ears as you're having this procedure done because at times it, it may sound kind of like fireworks going off. At least that's, that's how exactly. it was for my first experience because I've had a handful of concussions and when I came to the clinic and I had Dr. Bueller provide me this, this therapy, that's, that was my experience. It was wild. Man, that's, it's a powerful fellowship to be with Dr. Bueller. I've seen some of the, some of his talks. I don't know if you'd call them talks. It was more of like a, I don't know. He just, he doesn't make you feel like he's talking at you. He makes you feel like you're talking, he's talking with you. Mm. It's like talking you through things. And so I've, I've heard some of the, the stuff that he's he's been explaining the work that he does it's like man that's a that dude is a great educator and i've never even met him and that's what he makes me feel like yeah you hit it right on the head man um honestly he is a healer and a powerful one but i've come to find that his real passion is educating and really empowering the future healthcare providers of this world to have the best of the best tools available to help the biggest amount of people to the highest degree. Yeah. So uh, tell us some of the benefits of, uh, of the nasal, the nasal specific technique. Is that what you called it? Yeah, exactly. NST. Yeah. NST. So um, I actually wanted to get you guys some pretty good literature and I went back into the archives and I, I pulled up something from the Journal of Cranio-Mandibular Practice of July 1991. This was written by a Stephen Berman, Dr. Stephen Berman. And uh, this is what he had to say about what the nasal specific technique can provide and what he's seen with his practice. Um, a quote, reported improvements include improved symmetry and beauty of the head and face less lead for orthodontic interventions, less disorders of visual refraction, less ear aches and ear infections, less mouth breathing, improved balance and coordination, fewer spinal problems, improved mental abilities and other positive psychological and physiological changes. So Jared, when you came into the office, uh, we had this brochure right here about the nasal specific technique. And as you can see, there's a long list. These are all the things that it may help with. Um, to read a few, chronic sinus infections, um, TMJ dysfunction, insomnia, sleep apnea, uh, depression, poor memory, poor balance and dizziness. And, you know, this technique is also a godsend for those suffering from post-concussive syndrome. It's... Um, it's a tough one when you sustain a concussion, especially if you in, within any sports or motor vehicle accidents. And for an individual, it's somewhat like turning the lights back on for that individual. And those are some of the, the many benefits that this procedure has to offer. Yeah, that's something that I've, so I've experienced two major things after, uh, I'll call it post-op. Um, even mm. though it wasn't an operation. Um, the first one is that I, I find my ability to focus on like when I'm listening to somebody, I can retain more of what they're saying. And that way when I'm having discussions, like here on the show is a good example where sometimes if if I lose the focus as dad's talking, because he can talk, he's one of those gifted people that can talk for 45 minutes on a topic. And um, I, I'm not one of those people yet in my life. Uh, but he can do that. So there's things that it's like, I have questions as he's going, but I don't want to interrupt him in the moment. And I don't know if, if you've noticed this change dad, but I used to interrupt you in the moment because I didn't have, I don't know if it was a mental capacity or, or whatever it was, but I didn't have the ability to really remember if I didn't have time to write it down. I didn't have time to remember and go back to that question. But now I've tried for the past month or so just waiting as you're going 
and I try not to interrupt and then I can go back to the question or sometimes I'll answer the question later on, which is the benefit of just letting them talk. It's like, oh, that question that I had, you know, five minutes into the the presentation, I don't have it anymore because he answered it 20 minutes into the presentation. So that that ability to focus and I, mental clarity, I guess I'll call it, I've definitely experienced that. Uh, my my apnea is basically gone and I don't, I'm not a mouth breather anymore. So uh, it's in a, it's one of those things where I know we have people in the audience that have had trauma to their head, their nose area. And uh, when you do that and you can't properly breathe out of both of your nostrils, you just become a mouth breather because you need the oxygen. And it's been really difficult for me to retrain my body to breathe through my nose rather than my mouth. It's been an interesting thing. I never thought I would have to go through that. Well, I'm sure that your wife. Yeah, it's a, it's an it. interesting experience. That's right. <laughs> yeah. The snoring has gone. So she likes that. Well, that's how I get majority of my male clients, their wives say, you need to sign up for this because I can't stand your snoring anymore. And so <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of guys coming in that way, you know? Now, some of the people that have had this done that I've talked to said something about a a, a mood booster or um, that they're, I don't remember how they put it, but I experienced a little bit of it where I, I felt a little bit, I felt more emotions the night of or the day after, but then that, that kind of faded away. But I've talked to some of my friends who have had it and they said that it it was able, they, they felt like they were able to enjoy happiness more. Is that something wow. that you've heard from uh, client feedback? Yeah, it is. Um, when I speak to you, it's like turning the lights back on. You have this this twinkle that you can see in that individual's eyes after the procedure. It's pretty amazing to see. And it's because you, when you take out the interference within the nervous system, it will now begin to function the way that your body was naturally designed. And the design is amazing. Um, with talking to focus and mental clarity and reducing brain fog, it really heightens one's ability to be able to focus in because not only is the brain now having less tension and stress on it, like now you're getting more oxygen and that oxygen is powering your body, helping the mitochondria of your body be able to function and produce ATP. And so it will produce more benefit within your performance. Um, the nervous system can also store tons of emotions within it and ingrain it into the subconscious. And when you liberate the tension from the cranial skull, it will also bring those emotions up speaking to, you know, feeling those emotions after the therapy. It's, it's amazing just how widespread the benefits of this procedure is. And what I find, not just with the nasal, but with other therapies that we provide here, they're amazing first places to start rather than jumping to medicating with that drug or jumping into this invasive surgery. It's like there's so many powerful non-invasive healing modalities out there that one can utilize before even having to go down that more invasive route. It's like we always jump so fast into it rather than working with the non-invasive powerful technology and healing modalities and then working our way towards more invasive routes. All right. Thank you very much uh, to Dr. Amada for coming on here, giving us his time, uh, for donating his time to us and answering some of the questions that we had and that you had. And I hope now you'll be uh, better able to make a good decision. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. I truly appreciate you listening every single week. And remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. 
Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. And remember, you